couple years ago, I created this momentum list and the goal was to have a hundred stocks and I treat cash as an asset class. So if the market begins to falter and I can't find new stocks, new hot stocks to put in the list, the slots get taken up by cash. So right now I have a hundred stocks in the list and I'm actually kicking out stocks that are slightly negative and in some cases could be uh, slightly positive in the list, but I kick out the, the weaker stocks first. It's like managing a team of employees or your fantasy football team. I'm picking the strongest and getting rid of the weakness. And that is a very good thing to do if you are trading. So to follow up, one thing I thought about was the fact that I, I'm doing this window dressing, so to speak. And before I get into that, let me just recap real quick. In order to make the list, I'm looking at 52-week highs and out closing highs. And then I'll actually, if I can't find anything there, I'll back it down to maybe 90-day closing highs, okay? But right now, I have plenty of stocks. And my premise is if a stock goes up 100% or 1,000%, it's going to make a new high first, okay? It's kind of like the, the the premise behind the buy at B with the IPOs. We're buying at new closing highs in the IPOs with the same sort of premise, which I came up with this Landry 100 10 years before I came up with the buy at B pattern, maybe longer. Anyway, so you're buying right into these new highs. And like I said last week, if you tried to do this on an individual basis or even with a few stocks, you'd probably be a little hit and miss with it almost said probably uh but if you're spreading that over 100 stocks or at least 20 or 30 stocks then the chances of you catching some really big winners are possible and i've already taken one out well one was up three or four hundred percent in the list and then i took it out of the list it might have only been up a hundred percent or more but it's only in a few days so some amazing things are possible now one thing i was thinking about is that there is some window dressing involved, so to speak, or as a, as a matter of speaking. Now, window dressing is when you have a shop and they put something in the front window that's really catchy and snazzy, and they may or may not actually have that in stock, but it's just something to get you in the store. And I was taking a look at this picture here, and there's something about this picture that would that would get me into this store, okay? And, and I don't know if it's a shirt or these jeans are pretty cool, or I, I think I'm really drawn to this pant for some reason. I, and it just would, if I were to see this window display, I probably would go into the store to check things out. Anyway, the definition of it is the arrangement of an attractive display in a shop window. Now it has other meanings in business and in stocks. And the, it says here, an adroit but superficial or actually misleading presentation of something designed to create a favorable impression. The government's effort has amounted to a little more than window dressing. Now, with stocks, it says that is, this means that the stock has been replaced close to the end of the reporting period. Now, I don't agree with this to boost performance falsely. I don't know about that because if, you, if you're if you trading as a technician, you will be putting hot stocks in like I am. But the point is, let's say you're a fund manager and your quarter just ended June 30th. Well, when you have to report what stocks you're long, you better have some NVIDIA in that portfolio, even if you just bought it the day before. And they call that window dressing. So again, this window dressing here, it's, I'm just very attracted to this window dressing. I don't know why. Anyway, so what I'm doing is constant window dressing. Now, long before I read this, and I forget which book I, I read it in, it might've been a behavioral science book or behavioral finance book, but they talked about rebalancing, which is sort of what I'm doing daily, rebalancing. Like uh, the more, their theory was the more you rebalance, the, the better off you would be performance wise, but they didn't, I'm not sure they, they thought too much about slippage of commissions and all that. And that's something I'm not thinking about a lot either with this Landry 100. So the map isn't completely the territory is what I'm saying with this, but it's, if you're up a hundred percent on the stock and you take it and you captured that gain, 
then a little slippage of commissions is not really going to kill you. But what I'm doing with this list, again, is constant window dressing. So um, I kicked out, for instance, kicked out Cava today. I kicked out Pins. Now, both of those might make new highs and go right back in over the next week or two or whatever. But if they don't, they're going to stay out. And I added in SPXC and ULS. So again, it's kind of a constant window dressing, so to speak, or rebalancing, however you want to look at it. Now, in New Orleans, which is about 30 miles from here as the crow flies, provided he doesn't get distracted too much, <laughs> but, uh, there's a, a grocery store called Dornax, and Dornax is famous for saying, we got that. And they have this uh, rather portly fellow here as their spokesman, and if you like, you want some kind of uh, meat or some kind of cheese or whatever, he's like, we got that. We got that. So it's it's a religious experience going there. I just absolutely love the store. They really do have everything. They have like a, a fantastic selection of beers and like I said, the meats and cheeses and everything. Great place to go if you have a little barbecue or cookout or whatever to get everything you need, including lots of beer. Now, my sister-in-law who live near the store, which she no longer does, and uh, I miss visiting them now because they were close to the store. Now I live in the middle of nowhere, which I don't want to go. <laughs> Not as much fun to go visit, but that's another story. But she said, well, they don't have everything. I said, well, give me an example. She goes, well, they don't have gluten-free, hypoallergenic, organic, dust-free kitty litter. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, you got me. But they have the beer and the meat. So anyway, so what's the hottest stock right now? Or it was the hottest stock two days ago? NVIDIA. So it's kind of like, yeah, we got that. So that's sort of the and i know i'm nerdy about this because that's kind of the exciting thing about it I, I was talking with one of you guys about a lot of these stocks and i was naming the stocks in the list he's like oh yeah i've, oh, I've been looking at that stock or whatever it, it, it he's kind of jazzed about the list too and i think it's a, a wonderful exercise for a lot of the reasons i gave last week and then for a few things i'm going to give this week too but anyway so that's sort of the constant window dressing i'm doing now i didn't put the video in yesterday okay Based on the screen capture, you can see NVIDIA has been in for 16% ride. Okay, so since I put it in, it's up 16%. I was asked about these numbers. This is just telechart, and you could, when you add stocks to a list, it tracks them, and you just simply add this column in. You can't see it here, but there's a little plus over here, and then you add in track percent, just Google tracking once you uh, hit the plus key. So this column here, we can look at the live list here in a minute. I, I know you're excited about that. It's probably as excited as I am, right? And we could see how the list looks today, but you could see that, for instance, GLW, which I'll mention in just one second, was up 1%, but since I put it in, it's up 18.52. So again, it's constant window dressing, and, and that's gonna improve your performance because it's going to keep you in the hottest stocks. Now, once they really take off, then you can give them a little wiggle room and let them run. And, and the idea here, ideally, would be to get into the, the next NVIDIA, so to speak. And I, I do hate when people say that, by the way. So if I if you catch me saying that too much, call me on it. I know I know it said AMS, see the next NVIDIA, but, or the next Amazon or whatever. But... The ultimate goal would be to get stocks in this list and have them in the list for a long, long time. And it's a bit of proof of concept, like I said last week, but it does help you to really see what's happening in the market. And I've forgotten how useful this list was. And it's it's work, it's not a tremendous amount of work, but any incremental work that I have to do is more work. But what I've seen in the last few weeks since I, since I rebooted this thing, it's only been up and running two weeks, two or three weeks, whatever. I've been pretty amazed. So again, the constant window dressing, so to speak, keeps you in the hottest stocks. And it also helps you to find hidden themes, okay? And that'll make sense in one second. And to not confuse the issue with facts. So what do I mean by that? Well, take a look at Corning. Corning is kind of a, a boring old stodgy company. And you can see the HV is fairly low, 34. It's not super low, but it obviously with this move that it made on this day that I grabbed it was pretty big. And you can see that it's up about 13% since I put it in. I probably put it in on this day here, if I had to guess. And we could, if if 
you guys want to take a look at any one of these and find out when I put them in, it's no big deal. It's just, like I said, I'm just, this is kind of a mechanical thing almost with a little bit of discretion on my part on, on which ones I'm picking. But you can see that it's up 13%. I don't know where it, what it did today since I put it in, but part of that was that 12% move that it made on whatever day this was. So this is a boring old stodgy company and I just wanted to see what business they were in nowadays because it's they were making glass or something years ago. And it turns out that they're making some sort of displays or something and it's tangential to AI. And here's the here's the crazy thing I'm seeing with AI. Stocks that are like AI stocks aren't really going through the roof but the picks and shovels type of stocks to support ai are really taken off and that is something cool that this is provided also we were just long nne and i think i have the the trade from the service the mechanical trade i'll show you in one second but here's another one of these little small scale nuclear companies now i don't know whether this is a viable producer of power or just some kind of, you know, another one of those energies of the futures that we keep hearing about that always remains the energy of the future. But so what? Through technical analysis, if these things are moving, then we're going to go after them, right? Especially once they set up, of course. But this kind of keeps you in the flow. And it's just been a wonderful thing to do. If this is something you want to do on your own, I think it'd be a wonderful exercise. I could, I'll could, i be happy to let you know exactly how I'm doing it as much as I can. Go in and watch last week's presentation. Now, again, it's going to help you unearth these themes and see where the money's going and sector action. And these crypto miners are just popping up in here like crazy, like popcorn. And my question is, why are these crypto stocks doing so well given the bear market the bear market in crypto as you'll see in just a minute so that's got me scratching my head a little bit but what is is and don't confuse the issue with facts so i might be looking to go after some of these crypto stocks now they're a little wild and crazy i'll give you that and they're a little hard to get in and do the do the trend following more on stuff but i think i think some of these could be plausible now, I just kind of randomly picked a, a few of these. And what's kind of cool, and again, I know I'm kind of going off on a nerd thing, geeking out on this, but what's kind of cool is it's it's popping up with a lot of adjacent stocks, so to speak, like semiconductor adjacent stocks, like not an actual semiconductor. Like years ago, there was a semiconductor it was considered kind of a semiconductor stock, but it was actually really a chemical company that made chemicals for the semiconductor industry. Well, I never heard of metrology equipment until a few days ago when I put the slide together, or yesterday. But anyway, and that's some sort of precise measurement that they use for semiconductors. I don't know how that works, but I find it kind of interesting that here's a tangential company or adjacent, how you want to look at it, to semiconductors. And the same kind of thing is happening, obviously, with the AI stocks. And this list is beginning to unearth it. And here is an AI-driven health intelligence platform. Anybody remember the dot-com days? Oh, God, wish we can go back to then for a little, uh, a little while, right? Well, anything with a dot-com on it went straight up back in the day. And so this is an AI-driven health intelligence platform. They have the buzzword AI in there, but it might be worth a shot if it sets up, of course. And here's another AI stock. Now, that might be more of a pure play. I don't know. I'd CRDO. Now, here's one that I found kind of interesting. A politician who does not lose at trading just bought that particular stock. So that would be uh, a friend of mine was just getting into Twitter and he was asking me what to follow. And I gave him a few people to follow, like Dave Keller, people like that. And there's somebody that that posts all these politician trades on there. And I forget who it is, 
but it'd probably be a good idea to follow them because this politician, and I'm not getting political here, believe me, <laughs> but this particular politician is a really good trader, okay? I, I'm just saying, I don't know how he or she does it, she, but uh, he or she, she is really good at this trading, like really, really good, just saying. But that's the beauty of technical analysis. If somebody knows more than you about these stocks and their performance and what they're going to do next, which they do, okay, then it's going to show up in the charts. I'm geeking out tonight. Now, here's like another random thought that I thought as I'm going live. It's like, and then today really woke me up to it. It's like these REITs are popping up everywhere. It's like, REITs? Are you kidding me? It's like, ugh, the boring old REIT. Okay. Hey, no names, no names, Brian. But yeah, she's a really good, I mean, he or she is a really good trader. Or maybe they, they are, they are a really good trader. Let's, let's leave it there. Uh, <laughs> oh, somebody jokes a little time. But anyway, REITs, okay, real estate investment trust. Maybe all this vacant real estate is going to be needed to house all these AI computers. I don't know. And it's not my job to figure out why the pieces fit. I'm just a trend following moron. And my life got so much better after I got through my initial depression and anger and those five stages or whatever it is of you know, acceptance and you know all that other stuff after being called a trend following moron. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I am a trend following moron because because when I confuse the issue with facts, I don't do that well. Or if I try to pick a top or whatever, I don't do that well or bottom. But if I just follow along like a good little trend following moron, I do okay over time. 